Hey, what is up guys? It's Brendan here and today I'm going to be showing you how to customize the checkout page on Shopify. So as you can see here, we're currently on the Shopify checkout. This is the default look and feel of a typical Shopify store. This is what we're going to be customizing here today. All of the different colors, backgrounds, exactly how to customize your checkout page on your Shopify store. Now, before we dive into things, I do want to mention if you don't already have a Shopify store, you can go check out that first link down in the description box below. That's brennanvaleski.com forward slash Shopify. That will take you right over to this page here where you can get started with a Shopify free trial and get started with Shopify for free today. Again, that's that first link down in the description box below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that you are first logged in to your Shopify store on the Shopify dashboard. Next, you're going to come over here to online store. Now, depending on what theme you're using, this may look slightly different, but it generally should be more or less the exact same process, no matter which theme that you are using. So next, you're going to come over here to the green customize button. You're going to click that button here. Now, of course, currently I am using the Dawn theme. Again, this should not really make much of a difference when editing your checkout page. You're going to click that green button here called customize and that will take you right over here to the theme editor. Now, next, the easiest way to get to the checkout page is to come up here to the top under home page. Of course, this is under the online store 2.0 setup. Underneath home page, you're going to click this drop down menu that will bring up this menu here. You're going to scroll down and select checkout. This will then tech you, take you to a a dummy checkout page as you can see here now you can't actually edit the checkout using sections so to edit the checkout you then select click this link here uh, to customize your checkout go to theme settings we're gonna go into theme settings now alternatively uh, you could also just go to your theme settings on the left hand side here uh, with this little paintbrush icon and then scroll down here until you see checkout the checkout drop down. There's a couple different ways to get to it. I figured I would just show you both and then this way it gives you uh, a way to check your work as you're going. So this is where you access all of the different checkout uh, page settings and things that you can edit within your checkout page. So we're just going to be going through this step by step each of the different options that you have for customizing your checkout uh, when it comes to colors, images, and all those kind of things. So first thing, of course, we have a banner. So we can add a background image banner if we would like to. As you can see here, uh, we're going to select this one. And of course, this does sometimes take a little bit of time to load each of these different settings if you are changing background image. Okay, as you can see here, now we have a nice little header image for the checkout. So this is a great place to maybe put some branding or a nice little background. Maybe if you're a watch store, maybe we go with this like overall collection of watches. Uh, that was just sort of like a, a miscellaneous clothing rack. Uh, but this is what that will look like. So as you can see here, we have a nice couple of little watches laid out there. We're gonna go with that one. Now, of course, the logo text is a little bit hard to see with that specific image. The default is white text here. Um, so just bear that in mind if you're going to be editing things or changing things around. Uh, but that is a banner background image, so you can add that there. Uh, if you want to add in your custom logo, currently this shop, this test store for tutorials does not have a logo image. It's just the uh, plain text for the logo, but you can easily add your logo here if you're going in and selecting an image. Uh, let's go ahead and search for maybe something that looks like a logo. Uh, just as a test and eh, not so much so let's go to the library I guess maybe if you had like <laughs> a picture of a watch as your store logo but this is where you would go ahead and add your logo uh, if you had one to add to your Shopify store as you can see here it will then shrink the image down as well so in this example we have the watch uh, image as the logo which is a little uh, ridiculous or silly here but uh, as you can see, it will automatically shrink down the image as well. So keep that in mind when you're adding in your logo. Uh, you probably want to use a PNG file just so that you don't have any background image. So as you can see here, this is just the JPEG format, which includes the backdrop here. So when you're uploading your image, make sure it's like a PNG or something where you don't have the, the background there so that it meshes well. Uh, across different pages and so that there's no like background uh, image 
covering it. Of course, depends on the way that you style out your logo, but that's just a quick, you know, little recommendation uh, I would have for that. So we're going to deselect that because we, we don't need an image for the logo. So we're going to get into editing some of the other aspects of the checkout page here. Uh, but that is where you would add your logo if you have one. You can also adjust the position. So as you can see, since our logo is just the text in this case, uh, you can center it, uh, the logo as well. You can adjust the sizing here. So position if you want things centered, uh, if you want things on the right, you know, left, right, and center. Uh, we're going to keep it to the left in this case. Uh, and editing the checkout page sometimes does take a little bit of time to load because it's a lot of things that you are um, playing around with. As you can see, there we go. Logo size. Let's see what it looks like when it's large. So you can adjust the sizing of your logo as well on your checkout page uh, here in this section. Uh, as you can see, since it is just text, it probably doesn't really change it all that much um, because it is just the text. But if you did have an image, it would adjust the sizing a bit more as you could have seen before with the little watch image there. Uh, so that's more so if you have an actual image um, for the logo size. Now, getting into the main content area, it, and the main content area would be this area here uh, behind the out of stock section and the description. So we're gonna change that background image. Let's go with something a little bit darker. Maybe this little, this image here, see what it looks like. Uh, now, a lot of times this will kind of mesh a little bit odd sometimes. As you can see here, now it's almost impossible to read everything. So that's something to keep in mind when you are selecting. If you're doing a background image, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you test these things just because some images, as you can see, this one got kind of cut off a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit, sometimes difficult to get exactly what you want. Of course, you could go into a, a photo editing software like Canva is a good one or Photoshop if you're familiar with Photoshop and you can kind of adjust things and play with them and just keep uploading and testing it to get the right look and feel for how you want it on your store. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and remove that image there just because it looks a little bit odd in that position. Uh, but alternatively to a background image, you can also adjust a background color for this section too. So you have background color, uh, you could select something like blue uh, or yellow, really the whole RGB color scheme is here. Uh, just keep in mind the text colors, you don't want to be blending something that then you can't read other pieces of text that you have in your shopping cart um, as well. So bear that in mind, if you're gonna be going with like a darker tone, you may wanna change like the text color. Uh, so we're gonna stick with that sort of like light blue, baby blue sort of color. I think that looks somewhat decent uh, for a background color. It's not too overpowering. Um, so we have that in the form fields, as you can see here, you can go with white or transparent as well uh, for specific form fields uh, within your checkout. And that is more specifically for the fields when people are entering in this information here, like on their shipping information. Um, that would be the form fields when people are typing in maybe their contact info, their shipping address, things like that, or the discount code box as well. Uh, those are things to consider there as far as the form fields and what that would look like. You also have your order summary section, which is the section on the right here. You can change out. If you want to add a background image, you can add a background image there, or you can just select a background color, just like this other side here. Um, for the main content area, it's the same setup for the order summary section. Uh, if you want to edit any of these fields, so maybe you want to make that darker, lighter, <laughs> uh, we're going to stick with white, uh, in this case. And as you scroll down, then we also have typography. So this is where you can edit some of the other accent colors, uh, as well. So as you can see here for typography, we have the headings as system as this text. These are all the different fonts that you can select if you want to change out the font and look and feel of your headings uh, within your checkout section. So as you can see, we selected Laura. Uh, and as you can see now, it changed that there. It changed the logo text. It changed the out of stock text just for the headings. Uh, let's go ahead and try uh, Oswald as another option there as you can see, and then the system, let's go with the same font, even just for the body. So the body text, that would be including all the other sections on this page here. 
Uh, the headings are just for the other one. As you can see here, now you have customized the body text to Oswald, which this is the font I use for a lot of my thumbnails on my YouTube channel. And I think that looks pretty cool. It definitely gives your store, when you change out the, the default fonts, it really definitely gives your store a, a more custom look and feel. It really makes your store stand out just from a visual perspective. Um, if you're trying to just edit things and make things look a little bit different from the norm. Of course, you want to still make sure things are readable and legible, um, but it does definitely make your store stand out. It definitely looks pretty cool uh, compared to just the standard options that come with Shopify. And so after the font typography, you also have colors, of course, the accent colors, which would be the links, highlights, and check marks, as well as your buttons. So your gift card, discount, and next step buttons, as well as your error messages. So if you want to change out these, of course, your accent colors, um, you definitely want them as different uh, from your error messages. So maybe let's go with something, uh, let's go with like a... I don't know, maybe like a dark blue or something like that. Sort of maybe to watch, match this watch face here. So maybe something like that. Uh, sometimes it takes a second. Okay, so something like that. As you can see here, now the text has changed. It's a little bit hard to see that. Uh, let's go ahead and change the buttons over. And boom, as you can see here, now the button sort of matches that little bit of like a darker blue, a deeper blue color. Uh, the error messages would be like this section here with sold out. I personally like to keep error messages as red. Of course, this is up for you to decide if you want to change things. Um, you know, you can change the error messages to, to other colors, but really red is the universal color for like stop error. I would just keep errors as red just because everybody knows an error is red. Uh, you know, maybe if someone's colorblind, then maybe you want to change that a little bit. But in general, at least you still have the... Um, the icon there that shows that something is sold out or other error messages uh, in case something has a problem in the checkout. But I think this is looking pretty solid. Uh, you also have the ability to customize your CSS uh, as well if you want to add custom CSS. We're not going to be doing that in this tutorial here today, uh, but that is another way that you can uh, add it for your entire store. Again, these changes don't apply to the checkout page specifically for custom CSS, but you can add things uh, just your store there as well. And then next we have the actual checkout settings um, as well, which we're going to be viewing in the admin section in just a second. We're going to go ahead and save this here. This is for customizing the overall look and feel of your checkout. And next we're going to be moving into how to edit the actual checkout specific settings. This is more just like how it looks visually. Let's go ahead and refresh this page here so you can kind of uh, see what it looks like on this checkout and boom. As you can see, completely different, totally changes the overall uh, look and feel of the checkout, like night and day difference, really, uh, when you're changing everything around. So, you know, tons of different ways you could edit this for your specific liking. Now, to go into the specific other checkout settings, all you have to do then is select visit the admin, and this will take you over to the checkout settings within your Shopify stores admin settings so this will bring you here as you can see checkout and accounts uh, if you need to get to this another way you can just go to the bottom left hand corner click on the settings tab and then that will bring up this page here and you can just select checkout and accounts you could also alternatively search for it in the search bar at the top of your shopify stores dashboard that will bring you here to checkout and accounts now generally you don't necessarily need to edit any of these settings if you're good with just editing the look and feel and you're just good with the default shopify checkout you really don't necessarily need to edit these settings, but if you need to, here's what where you can get to it. Of course, check out an accounts. You have customer self-service returns, which is a newer feature. Uh, so you can submit return requests without having to call, uh, email or call you, so people can do that there. Um, you can customize the checkout, of course, that would take you back to the other thing that we just did. Uh, here is where you can edit some of the fields. So if you wanna edit the contact fields, uh, within there generally I again I like to leave these as default personally um, but you can change them if you maybe if you need an email or you don't want to get people's phone numbers just select email there uh, you can do that uh, so this is basically when customers are entering their information here as you can see here contact information email or mobile phone number if you select email then they won't be able to just put in their phone number so that's depends on you if you want to change that uh, you can also select how customers can choose to get shipping updates. You can either show a link to the shop app or not. 
Uh, the shop app is pretty good for tracking orders and for getting shipping updates. I've personally used it and gotten shipping updates. It works good. So it's fine to leave a link there for Shopify shop app. Uh, you also have customer information. So this is where you can edit if you want to re only require a last name or if you want to require a first and last name. Again, I like to leave a lot of these default uh, company name. Maybe if you need a company name from somebody, you can either make that optional required. Don't include it there. Uh, if you need to add uh, address line two, you can make it optional. Don't include or required. Again, I like to leave a lot of these default shipping address phone number. You can also either uh, require it or make it optional or don't include. These are more specific for certain types of Shopify stores. So I figured I would include that this is where you can edit these settings. If you need to customize your checkout settings specifically, for most people, you'll probably not even need to touch this, but uh, if you want to also add tipping as well, you can do that, which is pretty cool. So you can also add tipping percentages, uh, which that would be more applicable, I guess, to restaurants. You don't typically uh, tip <laughs> an online store who sells you a beanie, but hey, you know, that's beyond me. If you want to add a tipping section and, and be a part of all the tipping memes, then there you go. You can add your, uh, <laughs> your tipping percentages at checkout. Maybe make the third one like, you know, uh, like a, a huge percentage. I don't know. That's a joke. Uh, going along here, that's more for restaurants, I guess you could say. Um, if you have like a POS system, that would make more sense for those type of Shopify stores. You also have order processing. So you can use the shipping address as, as the billing address is default. Use address auto completion, which is cool. Um, you could select that maybe if you want to. Uh, you also have the ability to do uh, automatically fulfill the orders line items, automatically for, fulfill only the gift cards, or don't automatically fulfill any of the sections automatically, automatically archive once it's been fulfilled and paid. Uh, you also have marketing options, so email or pre-selected. You could make it pre-selected if they uh, you want people to be pre-selected into email marketing. Uh, that would mean this checkbox here. That's what that is uh, here. If you want to do that, you also have abandoned cart emails. Definitely recommend using uh, abandoned cart emails. That's a great thing to do. If you want to edit those here for anyone who abandons the checkout or only email subscribers, uh, or you can send after a certain amount of time an order status page as well. If you want to add specific scripts or additional uh, code here, you can do that there. Uh, and the checkout language, if your store is in English and the account experience in general, uh, where people can manage their Shopify accounts as well as um, checking out sign-in sections. So if you want to allow customer self-service returns, that is a newer feature. If you want to allow that, that's how you can do that there at the bottom. So that is pretty much all of the different uh, checkout settings and how to edit your checkout page on your Shopify store. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button. And again, I do want to remind you, if you don't already have a Shopify store, you can go and check out that first link down in the description box below. That's brennavaleski.com forward slash Shopify. That will take you right over to this page here where you can get signed up with a Shopify free trial and get started with Shopify for free today. Again, and that's that first link down in the description box below. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to edit your checkout page and your checkout settings. If you did, again, be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well, and the notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. But anyway, guys, that is all for today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.